Welcome back, everyone. As we continue okay. to follow breaking news coming out of a UTD camp, uh, Dallas, UTD okay. campus rather in Richardson, uh, just about 30 minutes ago, maybe 35 minutes ago now, uh, there was a heavy police presence uh, that just sort of marched in to remove protesters, dozens of them that had set up an encampment there on campus. These are uh, pro-Palestinian yeah, protesters uh, that had been making their intentions and their demands known to the university, and they, one of those on, on, intentions was that they were not going to leave. Uh, so uh, we saw again that they were given a, uh, a warning. We're told uh, shortly before four o'clock about a 10-15 minute I'm warning ready. to make the decision, according to our Jason Allen, of whether they were going to stay in that encampment or not. And shortly after that, uh, the police officers uh, from multiple agencies, including state police, marched in there uh, and they removed them. Right now, this is what you see—sort of a, a standoff now between and, them. And we should point out that it's not the protests that they have an issue with; it's the encampment right. itself, uh, really taking over the over the center of campus, and that's what they wanted to eliminate, get rid of the encampment itself. You can see the protesters, though, they had put up these uh, plywood uh, press board barricades there. They've chained tires to trees, yep. um, and the police are there uh, at the perimeter of this now just to keep them away from that encampment that they are trying to dismantle. Yeah, Jason had been reporting that a lot of the students were also encouraging other community members to mm -hmm. help in and, and, and join in with them. Not sure right now what that count is, uh, but clearly you can still see a very large presence of protesters uh, that are still present there and again they're sort of facing off with those state troopers as you can see on the top of your screen. I think Jason, um, Jason do we have you? Are you back with us? Yeah, I'm here, Ken. Yeah, we're, we're, we're taking a live look right now from uh, from the chopper again, just above. Uh, I know you're down there on the ground somewhere uh, near near that crowd. Uh, what's the latest here as we reset the situation here at, uh, at 430? What's it looking like? So we came around to the other side, Ken, of this demonstration, and I'm not exactly sure what the direction is right now from law enforcement, because since we moved, as you were talking, law enforcement, it seems like, is starting to maybe expand this uh, perimeter a little bit further. Um, are they making a path? Okay. Uh, Robert, my photographer says they're making a path, so I'm going to show you why. Um, because uh, this, this bear cat that's down here. I think they're getting ready to bring this in. Yeah, here it comes. Okay. It's moving in. So this is some of the equipment that has been staged uh, just down the end of the mall. Mm -hmm. um, we really didn't notice any of this coming together, Ken and Karen, until about, I would say, 345, and everybody just kind of came in at once. Um, so you're you're seeing this as I'm seeing it. So Jason, uh, they are just going to walk this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So Go for ahead, those Karen. for those who don't know the purpose of this, um, explain to folks what what this is used for in situations like this. A lot of times we will see this used, Karen, in in SWAT situations when police need protection. If they're going into a spot where somebody is barricaded in a home, uh, barricaded in a building, it gives police protection to move in closer and be out of danger. It's also a very right physically intimidating, intimidating. piece of equipment yeah. when mm -hmm. it comes in. Absolutely. And anybody, you know, to this point who has been thinking, well, maybe I'm going to stay here or maybe I'm going to cause an issue, um, may think twice when they see that. So now what we're seeing is a number of uh, pickup trucks from UT Dallas. Um, some of them here with the public safety system. It looks like some of them maybe with maintenance are being brought in. I think to come in and pick up some of this debris, right? Yeah. Some mm -hmm. of these tents and everything and these tables that were set up. And so now it's pretty clear that the um, the armored truck was to clear the path, uh, safe for all to come in, uh, make sure that nobody got in their way. So I think this is what we've been waiting for for the last 20 minutes or so, is for this to set up, um, for police to be sure that they had everybody out of the actual camp and now they'll start the process yeah. of cleaning up the camp. That's exactly I haven't seen Ken and Karen, you know, really the, the, the numbers of people, I haven't seen them dwindle at all. And, and there is a, I, I know you want to focus on what's going on right here in the center, but I'll just tell you what else you're seeing and maybe you can see it from the chopper. You know, any student who is coming out of class this afternoon and leaving, they're definitely coming to this part of campus right now to observe and see what's going on. So they're staying in distance, but there is a, a, a pretty good crowd of kids that has sort of developed uh, on the outskirts, the outer edges of the uh the, the breakdown here of this this attempted encampment here at UT Dallas.
Yeah, and Jason, you know, it, it's, it's interesting that uh, they, they're moving in as quickly as they are to start removing uh, some of the debris, as you were talking about, some of the tents and some of the other uh, material that was left behind, because the crowds are still there. You know, it's, it's not like uh, it, it gives you the sense that they're moving very, very fast uh, to try and find a resolution to this situation quickly uh, and to restore as much order as possible, because typically, uh, you know, you, you want to have crowd control first and make sure that maybe they dissipate or that things cool off a little bit if they are going to stay there before people come in and start essentially trashing their possessions. But the fact that they're doing this right now in front of them uh, leads me to believe that everyone involved in this wants, wants quick resolution at least. Right. And, you know, Jason, we did see those folks who were there at the camp who were refusing to leave. We saw them get arrested, a, a handful of them. I wouldn't say more than a dozen. Um, but I don't, obviously, we don't know exact numbers just yet. But there were certainly a number of people who had no intention of leaving that encampment that they are now trying to remove. No, there, there were very, there were some people who very willfully, um, you know, planned to be arrested, and they went without, uh, without resisting. There were a few people who did resist, um, and they were taken away very forcefully. Ken, to your point, um, I think that what we saw here was law enforcement felt like the crowd situation was under control. Remember, they once they moved in very methodically. And they set up kind of their own lines and let protesters sort of stay on those outer edges. They did not move from that spot for the next 15 minutes. So it, I think what you're seeing is it's a situation where law enforcement felt like what they had come into, they'd moved out the people that may give them a problem or that they needed to arrest, that everybody else they were comfortable was going to stay on the outer edges of that line. And there are still a number of law enforcement officers who are over there forming a line as well, and they're holding that line. But they felt it was finally okay after that that they could bring in other personnel who are not law enforcement, right? Personnel who are just uh, university staff. I should point that out too. The folks who are cleaning this up, they're not with public safety. You know, they're not, although there are firefighters and a number of law enforcement here, uh, these folks are not. So they needed to make sure that it was a situation where it was safe for them to come in and potentially put themselves at risk. Um, and clearly they felt that at this point it was it was okay to do that. There's a lot here. And I'm, oh, yeah. I'm telling you, Ken and Karen, they've got three pickup trucks. They're going to fill up real quick. <laughs> They're going to have to go back and... They'll, be back. They'll need reinforcements, yeah. They're bringing more trucks because... Mm -hmm. There are a ton of yeah. tents. There are pallets of drinks and snacks, and this is not going to be cleaned up no. in one quick trip. And I, I should tell you, Jason, that we did receive a statement from UT Dallas, and perhaps this is the statement that um, that student organizer read. You mentioned that she read to the crowd before the police arrived. Um, it says, notice the setting up of an encampment, including tents, barricades, and other structures, is not permitted under the university's policy for speech, expression, and assembly nor is it permitted under any other University of Texas at Dallas or UT system policy or rule. Individuals may peacefully assemble in the common outdoor areas of campus and exercise their right to freedom of speech, but individuals may not erect or maintain an encampment. Individuals are not permitted to block or obstruct passageways to facilities, including outdoor passageways. And then it underlined in, all ca or in a bold font, it says, this is a written notice that all tents and structures must be removed immediately. Failure to comply with this instruction may result in removal for criminal trespass or other violations of state law and or sanctions under the student code of conduct as appropriate. Yeah, and, and you know, what I don't know from that, Karen, and that does sound like the letter that was, the student leaders read to the group that was here. What's not clear at this point is how much time they actually had to take the encampment down on their own. They read that letter to the group about 10 to 15 minutes before law enforcement came in. So. I don't know how soon they had it today and how much of an opportunity they had to take it down on their own. Uh, maybe it was a situation where when they didn't act right away, that's what law enforcement did. You can see one of these trucks, I'm just going to spin around here, is uh, just about to try to get its way out of here. Um, an another takeaway from that statement uh, that you just read, Karen, at least to me, is the mention of the UT system mm -hmm. and applying the rules here to the UT system, right? We saw what happened at, at UT Austin with them making it, the school making it very clear that while they would put up with uh, allowable free speech and protests and demonstration, they would not allow uh, erection of structures or encampments or tents or anything like that. So what that, what 
what I took away from that is they're applying the same rules that they had at UT uh, in Austin to the situation this afternoon here at UT in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, Jason, uh, stand by for a second. Uh, we're going to check in right now with uh, Dr. Alex Del Carmen. He is a criminologist with Charleston State University. He is a voice, a person that we lean on heavily uh, in times like this uh, to try and give us some more perspective, uh, especially when it comes to law enforcement responses to this. So, Dr. Del Carmen, if you can hear me, this is Ken. Thank you very okay. much for joining us once again. Uh, we're, we're watching these pictures now. Uh, we're at the point now where uh, the encampment is, uh, you know, what was trashed of it is now being removed, but the crowds are still there. What, what do you, typically happens now, you think, from a law enforcement presence? Because we haven't seen any more arrests happen, at least not on our cameras. Uh, is this more of a crowd control operation now? Are they looking to make more arrests, or are they just hoping that the protesters kind of cool off for a bit? Um, we're having a hard time uh, hearing you, Dr. Del Carmen. Just one moment. It seems we're, uh, the nat sound that we're hearing from the campus uh, is overshadowing you. I don't know if we can pot up Dr. Del Carmen. Okay. In the meantime, um, I do want to mention that our photographer, Robert, there, you can see uh, in the right hand side from our helicopter, uh, counter protesters uh, have yeah. appeared. This is the first I've I seen of uh, some of the counter protesters there at UT Dallas, but a couple of folks raising Israeli flags and uh, waving them and, and, and holding up flags. Very, very peaceful, very quiet, but um, making their own point. Yeah, and, and, and as you mentioned, Karen, this is the first time in this, this event, for example, that, that, that I've seen that. Um, and, and I'm wondering, Jason, if you can hear us, uh, if, if, if they have anything to say. Are you, are you right next to them? It looks like you are. Yeah, yeah, oh, I, I am. And, and I do, you know, we have talked to a group of Jewish students today who said it was very important for them uh, to come out here and, and, you know, visibly show that they were still present here. Are you, are you with this group right Yes, here? sir. Can you tell me your name? My name is David, sir. David. Um, was it important for you to, to be here and have a visible presence at this today? Most definitely. I mean, at the end of the day, it really, no matter what you feel, the disrespect for law enforcement today, how they've been treated, coming in here, being called the KKK, being treated like an occupying force when they're just trying to make sure we can get through our final exams. I mean, I'm a student here. I had finals today, and I had to walk around this encampment because they would not let me pass through. And it just, it, 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 somewhere it needs to end. The buck needs to stop, and I applaud our governor for trying to take care of things around here for us. So, so David, when we talked to students earlier today, they said they felt like it was fine and able to have their say and have their peace, but they felt it was very, very close to the line, if not over the line, to set up something that would claim a space as their own. Yeah, at the end of the day, guys, down to voices. Stand up there and do what all they want to. But if we try, they're going to get, they're going to put their flags up in front of us. Our voice doesn't matter. And it really comes down to that, not having an equal say in American campuses. See, for example, like this right here. And then at the end of the day, it also comes down to we can't even have respect for law enforcement anymore. And it starts right here in these hallways and these buildings. Okay. All right. Thanks, David. Uh, so a, a ton of emotion here, right? And, and I want to point out again something that I just said to him, which was that uh, some of the students we talked to earlier today who were with Hillel, the, the, organiz the Jewish organization for students here on campus, said that they were fine with having the student protests and the demonstrations they were fine with them being able to say their piece but they felt where across the line again was when it started getting to the point of being an encampment that to administrators and felt like something had to be done and some move had to be made and that's clearly what administrators thought yeah, Jason, uh, we'll, we'll let you. Uh, I, I can see that you're getting you're getting bothered there by that protest. Yeah. Do what you got to do to get somewhere safe. We'll check in with you in a bit.